Will you say that with me? When seasons, when seasons change. change. Now, I'm sure everybody here tonight can agree with me that, amen, life presents to us different seasons. Some seasons are good and some seasons are bad. But the truth of the matter is, it is not how you go in. It is how you come out. And I don't know what season your life is in right now. I don't know what difficulties you may be experiencing. I don't know what challenges or what decisions you may be facing. But the Bible declared that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. But then the Bible also says that God is faithful. Amen. That he would not allow us to be tempted above all that we are able. But God will with the trial and the temptation make a way of escape. But tonight I, I just want, I want to share with you just three seasons that every man of God, woman of God, child of God, that is destined for purpose and destined will experience at some point in time in your Christian walk with God before you birth the hidden treasures that God has destined for your life. It's just three seasons that I want to deal with because oftentimes it is during these three seasons that God proves us and that God prepares us for the manifestation of the things that he has already preordained and predestined for our lives. Uh, like the life of Joseph, we understand that he went through different seasons that prepared him for the ultimate promotion that would allow him to be the picture of the glory that God had planned for his life from his birth. You've heard the saying, no pain, no gain. And anybody that is going to do anything productive Anything great in the kingdom of God, God will take you through a series of seasons to prepare you. One thing I learned is that God will, listen, the time that it takes for you to see the manifestation of the dream or the vision of whatever the gift or the calling of God upon your life, the time that it takes to see it come to fruition really has nothing to do with God preparing it for you. Come on, son. It has more to do with God preparing you for it. For it. Amen. That's why the Bible says, according to his divine nature, God hath. The word hath means past tense. That means something that's already been done. According to his divine nature, God hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. And so everything that God had planned to do in your life and through your life was already ordained and predetermined before you were born on the face of this earth. And so what God is in the business of doing now is, is preparing us for the manifestation. And sometimes God takes us through a series of seasons that is tailor-made for the outcome of what he's going to give us. Say it, say it. That's why my trial may not be your trial. That's right. And your trial may not be my trial. Because the Bible declares, amen, that, that, that if we lean out to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, yeah. we direct our paths. Yes, that word is plural. Paths. That means God gives us different, different paths, paths to go down. Amen. And with every direction that God will take your life, there is a season of preparation that prepares you for it. Amen, son. And I'm just here tonight to encourage you that the season is not designed to kill you. The season is not designed to destroy you. Amen. The season is not designed, amen, to rob you of what God is going to do in your life. The season is designed to prepare you so that when God releases in your life what he's going to do, amen, you won't destroy it. Number one. Number two, you will be the praise of his glory. Uh, I believe all the time God takes us through different seasons in our life so we can go ahead and make the mistakes. We go ahead and fall and get up and brush ourselves off and learn righteousness and, and learn obedience because it's easier to fall at one foot and get up than it is to fall at ten. Right. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And so these seasons are designed to groom us and to prepare us and and, and all of us have these seasons in common. And so here in our text, uh, it's very clear to me what these three seasons are. Mm -hmm. It says, where you great rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, season number one is, you are in heaviness. 
somebody say heaviness. Heaviness. Yes, yes. A season of heaviness. Says uh, from manifold, season number two, temptation. Ah. A season of temptation. Right. Then verse seven says that the trial of your faith be much more precious than a gold that perishes. So here's season number three. Though it be tried with fire. And so there are three seasons that all of us will experience at some point in time in our life. Oh. Number one is a season of heaviness. Yeah. Number two, a season of temptation. Yes, and number three, a season of being tried with fire. Yes, now, of course, it is not how you go in, but it is how you come out. And so not only does he gives us the three seasons that we're going to experience, and then to further down, he also gives us how he wants us to come out Thank you. of those seasons. Thank you, Lord. First of all, notice in the sixth verse, he says, though now for a season. The fact that he says for a season represents that it's a set time. Oh, yeah. That God is going to allow you to go through the situation. And then that season is going to turn and it's going to change. But when you come out of that season, here it says down here, it says, it says, being found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And so this is the way the Lord gave it to me. He says, so then when you go through your season of evidence, yes, sir. he says, I want you to come out with praise. <laughs> he said, when you go through your season of temptation, I want you to come out with honor. And when you go through your season of being tried by the fire, he says, I want you to come out with glory. Somebody to say heaviness, heaviness. Praise. praise, temptation, temptation. Honor. honor, fire, fire. and glory. glory. Come on, say amen. Sometimes we come to the house of God and we've been wounded. We've been so deeply wounded by some things people have done to us and people have said to us until you can just feel the pain all inside. Oh. Amen, somebody. Amen. Heaviness, just deep heaviness. Amen. Dealing with situations in life and, and, and things that you were pursuing and, and you knew God's hand was in it. You just knew that God was leading you that direction. And all of a sudden when it seemed like things were just getting ready to explode, all of a sudden the bottom seemed like it just fell out. And now you're wounded inside and you're hurt. Amen. You're smiling on the outside but you're crying on the inside. You're right. Just heavy. You're right. You know, I said one time I was in L.A. and I went to Universal Studios and looking at all the wonderful sights. And I had an idea. I said, you know what, Lord? I said, you know, if Hollywood ever run out of actors and can't find anybody to star in no more movies, all they got to do is send some producers to the church. Because we know how to cover it up. We know how to put on a false front. Amen, somebody. Well, how many know that God cannot heal what you do not reveal? So here's what the Lord taught me. He taught me, he says, when you have been wounded, when, when, you, when you're dealing with the spirit of heaven, it's because maybe you lost a loved one, or maybe a friendship was severed, or, or maybe you've been deeply wounded by somebody that you respect very dearly. God told me, he said, learn to deal with it. Cry if you want to cry. Do, do whatever you got to do. He said, but at some point in time, you got to dry those tears. Amen, somebody. Heaviness is, is that sometimes when we go through heavy situations, uh, what we tend to do instead of coming to church, we want to stay home. We want to pull the blinds down. And we want to have ourselves a pity party. But I'm going to tell you, saints, amen, that if you really want to deal with the season of heaviness, you got to learn how to praise God in the midst of your pain. Amen, somebody. Because it's something about praise that lifts. The spirit of heaviness. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Did you, have you ever had to come to church? You were hurting inside, but you told God, I'm going to church anyhow. I'm going to shout to 